Hey there! Welcome, young Skywalker. Are you using Google Gemini, CLI, or Code Assistant tool, and you want to add MCP servers to it? Well, I'm going to show you how right now. Let's get into it. All right, we're gonna get started by using Google Gemini in the CLI command line interface. I'm in my project here, you get in your project. I'm gonna assume you're already signed into your Google account that has access to Gemini and you can run Gemini MCP. And that gives you an idea of what you need to do in order to get started with adding an MCP server. So the one that I'm gonna be adding is the sneak MCP server for doing security scans. And the way I can add that for this is a number of different ways, but the one way I'm gonna go with it is Gemini MCP add I'm going to give it a name of sneak and then we're going to pass in the command and argument so the main command here is i'm going to leverage npx that i have already set up which is the same way that i installed gemini and then we're going to pass in the proper arguments for my mcp server so in this case it's hyphen y it's sneak at latest so we use the latest version of the sneak cli we're going to use the mcp command in that and then we're going to pass in some arguments this is, again, specific to this MCP server tool. I'm going to tell it the transport protocol is STDIO, standard input output. And we hit enter. And we're going to give that a second. And we can see that it was indeed added. So now if I run Gemini MCP list, we should see sneak listed on there and that it is connected. Now, if there were any issues, maybe you got your arguments incorrect or wrong. Let me show you an example of what that looks like if things are not working correctly so you understand. So if I added this in this way, and then I'll use the other protocol like SS, SSE that I'm not using right now. And I hit enter on that. We can see it got added, but if we go and run Gemini MCP list, we'll see that the sneak two one, the one that I intentionally got wrong, says disconnected. So Keep an eye out for that MCP list. Gemini MCP list is the command you want to use after you add it to verify that it was added successfully. All right. So what if you did add that unsuccessfully? It's not working. How do you remove that broken one and then figure out how to fix to the next one? Well, you're going to do Gemini MCP remove, and then you just pass in the name that you had used when you created it or added it. Okay. So that should be removed now. So if I run Gemini MCP list, we can see it's just the one that is working. That's there now. So there you go. That's how you add and remove MCP servers and make sure that they are working as expected and connected. Now, one thing to note with this is that I set up this MCP server using Gemini in the current project folder that I'm working off of. So in this case, it's this dev discord wordle bot. And what that results in, if I show you the folder here, is there's a new .gemini folder and in there results in a settings.json file, which has the contents that look like this. So if you wanted to, instead of using the CLI, you can manually create a .gemini folder in the root directory of your project, add a settings JSON file, and then add in the proper information into this JSON file using the MCP servers object there, JSON object, following this standard here like this. Now, the reason I call this out is that this is isolated to this project. So this MCP server that I've set up for Gemini to use and leverage is only going to be available in this project. So if I go to another project, it won't be available. So if you want to actually have this available across projects, you need to set it at the root directory of your user account for the operating system you're working on. Well, what does that mean? Let me show you. So for me, I'm working on Windows using Git Bash. So your experience may be slightly different from me if you're on a different operating system or using a different shell on Windows. The way you can double check whether you have a configuration settings file for Gemini at your root user account more globally is by running ls tilde slash dot Gemini. You're going to search for Gemini and you're going to search for the settings JSON file, right? And that is indeed there. I know I can see the full path now that that is there and I can open that settings JSON file and add in that MCP server configuration. In fact, I could copy and paste this one that's specific to and local to this project. I can copy and paste this one into that settings JSON file for the root global user so that it gets applied and available to other projects that I'm working on on this machine. All right, with that out of the way, now it's time for us to use Gemini with our MCP server that we just set up. If you are using Gemini CLI within Visual Studio Code, it will give you this prompt to ask if you want to connect VS Code Editor to Gemini CLI. In this case, just for now, I'm going to say no. And now we can start using Gemini right here. So I'm going to ask it to please tell me about any vulnerabilities in my open source, ooh, source dependencies for this 
this project. Now, what I expect to happen is it's going to analyze the contents of the project directory in this Discord Wordlebot and then trigger it to use that MCP server from Sneak that we have here. And that's what it's doing now. It's asking for permission to use the Sneak MCP tool, in particular, the Sneak SCA scan command. So I'm going to say yes. It's telling me it's not trusted yet. So it's going to run now. This is part of the specific to my MCP server that I'm using here. So it's going to run the Sneak Trust command which in this case requires me to open up my browser while I'm signed into my account for Sneak. So I'm going to do that really quick and come back here in just a second. Here's an example of Here's an example of what you would see in your browser that would pop up here. You click on Trust Path and then you can go back to the command line and continue from there. All right, I trusted that folder now to be used with Sneak and then it's going to run the next tool, the SCA scan now. All right, so Gemini finished using that MCP server from Sneak. Uh, running the SCA tool to scan my open source dependencies, found some vulnerabilities that are in there. And then Gemini analyzed that and told me that it found two vulnerabilities. One is high severity and the other is low severity. The recommended fix for both is to upgrade my dependency of discord.js to version 14.20.0. And then it's asking if I want to have Gemini attempt to do the fix for me by upgrading it. So I can go ahead and do that and move forward, but I actually don't want to do that just yet because the next step from here is I want to show you how you can leverage MCP servers in Google's Code Assist extension in Visual Studio Code. All right, so to get started using the Google Code Assist extension in Visual Studio Code, you need to install that in there. You can open up the extensions marketplace view in VS Code and then search for Gemini and you'll find this one, Gemini Code Assist, and you'll have an install option here like I do. It's telling me to restart to get an updated extension, so I'm going to do that really quick. Looks like that's all set to go. So now once that's installed, you'll see a little icon like this, which is the Gemini Code Assist right there. You can click on that. And in here, I'm already signed in, but it'll prompt you to sign in with your account like that as well. Now, one caveat to use MCP servers with Gemini Code Assistant in this instance is you need to be using the insiders build of the extension. That way you can leverage this agent mode that you can see here. You by default will likely not have that available to you and therefore it won't leverage any MCP servers that you might set up for it. So to get that, I'm going to show you right now. You need to go to settings. You can do that by going into VS Code settings by pressing control comma or command comma on Mac OS and you're going to search for Gemini update channel in there. And what you want to do is look for this one right here and you want to click this drop down. It'll be on default by default. You're going to switch to the insiders option. And then what that's going to do is it's going to let you know that in the background, it's going to install the updated version for that insiders build of the extension and then probably prompt you to restart your extensions in Visual Studio Code. Then once that's all done, if you open up the Gemini Code Assist extension here, you should see this agent toggle button available to you. You're going to click that on and then you're ready to go. Now, what's nice about this is it will automatically leverage this Gemini settings JSON configuration that we have here because we're working within this project folder. So Gemini in agent mode will leverage our MCP configuration via that settings configuration that we've set up from the CLI earlier. If you didn't do that in the CLI, you would have to manually come in and add that, like we said before, in this way for your MCP server that you're trying to add. All right, I gave Gemini Code Assist extension the same prompt that we did in the CLI, and we could see it's going through very similar steps here, just in a nice, more visually pleasing way via the extension here. So we could see that it can first check to see if we are authenticated with Sneak. I'm gonna let it go ahead and do that. All right, so it came to the same conclusion that the CLI version did, in that we need to upgrade Discord JS to version 14.20.0, and it's requesting to make edit changes to my package JSON file so that we use that version for this project. So I'm going to click accept. Then I'm going to run install. And then in this case, it upgraded to the newer version of 14.21.0. All right, so what I'm going to do now is let's verify that we no longer have those vulnerabilities. So I'm going to ask it to double check the vulnerabilities again to be sure of that. And there we have it. Great news. The scan confirms that all open source dependency vulnerabilities have now been resolved. So there you have it. That's how you get set up with MCP servers in Gemini, whether you're using the CLI or the Code Assistant extension for your IDE. If you're curious about Sneak and the MCP server capabilities of it, check out the link in the description below. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.